We live in an insane asylum. It's true. Think about it at any level. On the world stage, there's so much talk of war, and it's like our world leaders keep seeming to turn up the heat. There are the wars in Ukraine and Palestine that we hear so much about, but then there are 30, at least 30 other armed conflicts going on right now that we don't hear about in the news. In our country, there is so much polarization and differing opinions are met with hostility instead of dialogue. And then there are concerns about the environment, social justice, economic instability and inequality, mis- and disinformation, and a news cycle that makes us feel like we're in a perpetual state of crisis. And then we've got our own issues. At Thanksgiving dinner, there are so many third rails and landmines that you have to tiptoe around. And then maybe you guys have, like me, family members who happen to They like to lob grenades just to see how people are going to react. But with all of this, we should not be surprised because Jesus told us it would be this way. Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Today we celebrate the solemnity of Jesus Christ the king of the universe, and it is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. We have journeyed with our Lord from his birth, through his ministry, to his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension, and then into the growth of the church and the proclamation of the gospel to the nations. Next Sunday, if you can believe it, is the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a new liturgical year, when we do it all again. The rhythm of the liturgical year guides us through the seasons of the year as well as through the seasons of our lives. When I was a little one at Sacred Heart Elementary School in Kingston, the first graders every Advent would put on a nativity pageant to help get us ready for Easter. And then in Lent, the sixth graders would put on a passion play to get us ready to celebrate our Lord's resurrection. When I was really little for the first year or two, I thought that all the events of Jesus' life took place in just a couple months. But you know something? It does make sense that we reflect on the span of his life each year in the same way that we reflect on and we celebrate significant events like birthdays and anniversaries because it calls to mind the span of our lives from birth and baptism to final anointing and death. The readings that we've been hearing at Mass these past weeks have been preparing us for judgment. And today's gospel gives us a vision of what the final judgment will be like when Jesus Christ, the King of the universe, sits on his throne passing judgment on each and every human being, punishing evil and rewarding love and self-sacrifice. So, while at times it might feel like we live in an insane asylum, we know that in the end, God wins. And truth, beauty, and goodness triumph over ugliness, evil, and selfishness. At this point in St. Matthew's Gospel, which we are reading from chapter 25, Jesus has entered the holy city of Jerusalem for the final time. And since his time on earth is about to conclude, Jesus is pointing the disciples and us to his kingdom, the kingdom that lasts forever. Some people think that this life is all there is, but we have immortal souls and we are destined to live forever. But where we live for all eternity, that part is up to us and how we respond to the graces that God gives us. It's in judgment, really, that it's it's those choices, those choices that we have already made that Jesus confirms when he separates the sheep from the goats. The sheep and the goats, they determined their outcome for themselves. 
And the determining factor here was whether or not they acted or neglected to act on those who were in need. And we heard Jesus list specifically six works of mercy, feeding the hungry, giving the thirsty something to drink, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, and visiting the imprisoned. And then for those who loved Christ in their neighbor, we heard the most blessed words be addressed. Jesus said, come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But for those who did not show mercy, he said, depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, this is just a a subtle detail, but Jesus does not say that this punishment was prepared for human beings because God made us to know him, to love him, and to serve him so that we can be happy with him in this life and forever in the next. So any departure from that is not God's doing, but rather the result of our own human sin. Another detail that's kind of important is that for both the sheep and the goats, there's an element of surprise. Neither the sheep nor the goats expected the Messiah to identify himself with the disadvantaged. We heard the sheep ask, when did we see you suffering, Lord, and help you? And on the flip side, we heard the goats protest, when did we see you suffering and not minister to your needs? A number of years ago, I was talking to a woman whose brother who I knew had recently died. Her brother was a priest, and she shared with me a story about their father when he was on his deathbed. So the father was on his deathbed, and he called his children to his side, and he told them this. He said, my children, do you remember that when you were young, I taught you about your guardian angels? And the children replied, Yes, Dad. And he said, I told you that each of you have a guardian angel that follows you throughout your life carrying a briefcase. And it's into that briefcase that your guardian angel puts all of your good actions. Do you remember that? Yes, Dad, they said. And then he said that at our final judgment, that guardian angel would be standing beside you as you stand before our Lord. And he's going to open that briefcase so that he can show to God all of your good actions. They said, yes, Dad. And at this point, the man began to sob. And he said through his tears, well, my guardian angel does not have anything in its briefcase to show God. The night before his funeral, they had the wake at the funeral home, and since he was older and many of his friends had already died, they didn't expect that many people to come. But to their surprise, there was a long line that stretched out the front door and then around the corner outside. Many people who came who they didn't know, and a lot of them shared stories with them about their dad. One person talked about how he was going through a tough time and how their father gave him the advice that he needed to keep going. Another person told of how her car broke down and how she did not have money for the repairs, but their father took care of it so that she could go to work. And they heard many other such stories. So when that man stood before God, do you think that the guardian angel's briefcase was full? Of course it was. And I'll bet he had the same surprise as the sheep did in the gospel because he thought nothing of the good deeds that he did for others. He trusted in God, not himself. And then there's the last word in the gospel. And this is directed to the goats. Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these at least ones, 
you did not do for me. Friends, even though we live in crazy times, even though at times it might feel like we live in an insane asylum, even though it might look like Jesus has lost control, Jesus is patiently sitting on his throne and he's giving us all the graces that we need to love him through others. The challenge for every disciple of every time and place is to find those who are hurting and to show mercy. Maybe it's one of the six things that Jesus lists specifically in the gospel, but each of them really are an umbrella for all of the things that people suffer today. So, a question you might ask yourself in prayer, especially as we receive our Lord in Holy Communion is this. Who around you is suffering and what can you do to help?